Okay. So. So the next thing we're going to do today basically is radiation. I hope everybody's in the house. Okay, very good. So when we talk about radiation, what we mean is that it is the transfer of thermal energy by electromagnetic wave for example infrared so basically when you go under sun and the uh, sun is producing light but you also feel warm because sun is not only giving you light but it's also transferring thermal energy in form of electromagnetic waves which are primarily like infrared radiations that you feel now keeping that in mind we need to understand that this infrared radiation they do not require a medium to transfer heat when i say medium medium means basically solid liquid or gas this is what the medium means okay so basically without even particles so sun, between sun and us there is a there's just vacuum right and still we get the heat because of the fact that it's radiation right now now so this basically radiation is sort of a a type of energy that basically does not require a medium and but it is still affected by certain things okay so it can be affected by ma majorly two things color and then it can be affected by the texture so color we're going to talk about white and then we're going to talk about black And for texture, we're going to talk about shiny, and then we're going to talk about rough. Okay. So when it's summer, what would you do? Would you wear um, clothes which are white in color, or would you wear clothes that are dark in color? Who can tell me? The white in color. White. Why would you wear white? Why not dark colors? Because light colors absorb less heat and dark colors absorb more heat. Okay. So this would mean what Thamoshi and Swa are saying is absolutely correct. Because this would mean that white color is a poor absorber and black color is a good absorber okay now well that's something we did understand but what is the reason behind all the animals those are living in polar regions like arctic and antarctica like a polar bear why would be why would a polar bear be white why can't it be black 
Would it have to absorb the heat? Hmm. Have you guys ever thought about it? Yes, please. Why would a polar bear or a snow leopard hmm, be white and not black? Yes, Ali, what do you think? Is Caroline here? Hussain, Chavez. Is it, hmm. is it because um, the snow is white so that they can like camouflage into it? No, that's not the reason. That's, that, that is one reason, yeah, I could say that's fine. But the so, real reason is yes, yes. But sir, uh, don't they have like thick layers which give them conduction? okay but it doesn't really answer my question why would they be they could be black and have thick hair the reason is the reason is yes that is a very good thing what you said a white white color is not only a poor absorber but it is a poor emitter as well now what I'm saying is that a beer, I don't know how to make a beer, but please ignore my, you know, drawing. So I don't know if it looks like a beer. But beer, a white beer means that his body is warmer than the outside. Outside is colder, right? So if he's like the outer layer is made of white fur, so basically the heat from his body won't escape outside. Do you guys understand? Can you please explain again? Uh, again. So, white is not only a poor absorber, but white is a poor emitter, which means white does not let heat, once heated, cannot, you know, it does not let heat go outside as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yes, the bodies of the animals are warmer. This way, if they are white from the outside, their body heat could not easily escape outside, which is much colder, right? If, if the body heat escapes, then they're probably going to die, right? So what they want to do is, they are made white so that their body heat stay within and they do not lose that heat and they can survive in the cold. Do you understand now? Yes, sir. Okay. This would mean that not only a back is a good absorber, but a good emitter as well. It means black cools down rather quickly. Now think about it in another way. Who can tell me in the same polar regions Penguins also live, but penguins are half white and half black. So their chest area is white and their backs are black. Do you know why? Is it to, so that they retain more heat like in their chest? Yes, so basically their vital organs are in the chest, so they want to retain the heat there. But they basically lie backwards, so that little bit of sun that comes out, they can gain heat from the back, but retain it from the chest where the vital organs are. Do you guys understand now the logic behind it? Good. Yes, sir. Now, for shiny, shiny is a is basically a good reflector so if you put a shiny cloth over your car on a hot day it would stay cool why because it would he it would reflect the radiation far better than a rough one because a rough texture is a good absorber good absorber or we could write poor reflector so you guys can remember that so if basically you make rough surface it is not going to dissipate or reflect the heat 
as much as this shiny one and that would cause things to get warmer all right i hope everybody understands this okay now Now, the point of all this is that when we're looking at, you know, color and text and stuff, that is why the houses are never painted black from the outside. Because if the houses are painted black in color, in summers, they're going to absorb more heat, which means the houses will be warmer. And in winters, they're going to lose a lot of heat because black is a good emitter. And that's why the houses or the rooms are painted in light colors like white and you know off-white and stuff like this okay so that's basically every color has a reason that's why we're doing this right now there are <coughs> there are certain experiments that basically help us distinguish between a good and bad absorber of infrared radiation and stuff so let's look at those so suppose in a question through a question i'm going to explain this to you so there are two cans that are placed one can is basically painted black and oh no my coloring is so bad wait okay so one can is painted black and one can is painted white okay. so in both the cans in experiment one cold water of same temperature is added on a hot day so which can will cause the water to get warmer quickly what do you guys say so black yeah black. so it would be would be black very good and the reason for this is that black is a good absorber as it is a good absorber okay then it's he says that in an experiment to hot water is added to both cans at same temperature on a cold day which can will gain heat quickly yes what do you guys say white white would he uh, gain heat quickly Oh. 
sorry, 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 sorry. I lose. I wanted to write. Sorry, my bad. Lose heat quickly. Yes. Black. Black. Yeah. So it would be black. And the reason is as it is a good emitter as well. That's very good. All right. Now. Question? Yes. Uh, what's the exact definition of an emitter? Emitter means a type of material or a color or something that loses energy or just gives out energy outside. Do you understand? Uh, yes, sir. So, sir, emitter and reflector are not the same. No, no. No, no. They're not the same. Okay. Reflectors okay. are like shiny and rough. That depends on the texture. Okay, so let's do one more question and then I'll try to explain that to you. Okay. So now you got four cans. In fact, I'll just copy those because I have to color this and I hate coloring. So this one is written as black and shiny, white and rough, black and rough, white and shiny. Okay. So, a thermos is designed to keep hot water hot and cold water cold. Which configuration would be the best to achieve this result yes what do you guys say white and shiny white and shiny why is that So because shiny reflects heat energy and it's also a poor emitter. Yes, so white is a poor emitter and poor absorber of infrared and shiny is it's a, a good, reflector. good reflector. Very good. So you guys need to always answer this in these terms. All right. Very good. Is there something missing? Please let me know. So, 
the point is that why something emits and why something is absorbed when heat is absorbed and when heat is emitted so we need to basically learn that as well okay so for that we need to understand the concept of energy transfer between two different materials in contact so let me just tell you how to do this so suppose if there is a body which has a temperature of 25 degrees celsius and the outside temperature is is uh, in fact i'll just not do it with outside i'll just draw two bodies in contact and then i'll tell you what exactly this means so suppose this is body a and this is body b in contact this is 25 degrees celsius and this is 50 degrees celsius so you guys need to understand that the heat energy always transfers from a region of higher temperature to a lower temperature which means that because B is hotter it means that the heat flow will be from 50 to 25 so this is the heat flow do you guys understand this so heat energy from the high temperature like it is transferred to the area with the lower temperature right always that is correct okay now you guys need to understand that the greater the temperature differences the greater the energy transfer is going to be so if uh, two objects like one is very cold one is very hot so the rate of energy transfer would be faster all right so this means rate of energy transfer depends on number one the difference of temperature and the second thing it depends on is the surface area all right so let's talk about now the surface area and then i'm gonna ask you one question okay so for the surface area you guys need to understand if an object is like this small it has a temperature of 25 degrees celsius and there's an object this big which has a temperature of 25 degrees celsius so both of them have the same you know this is larger surface or smaller surface area and this has a larger surface area and the outside temperature like we can write the envir environment temperature is zero degrees celsius so what we need to understand is that this one is going to lose heat slowly and this is going to lose heat quickly why am i writing that it will lose heat shouldn't it gain heat from the environment it has a higher temperature yes so it is it has higher temperature from the outside so it means that the heat 
will be going outside so because temperature outside is lower so the heat always goes from higher to lower is it clear everybody yes all right that's pretty good okay so you guys can actually write this down please if you missed anything about have gone too fast please do let me know i can go back i'm just going to fetch i uh, get some get me some water i'll be back in one minute okay Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, now my question is, which I want to you know, uh, answer me, is suppose there are two bodies now. Body A, body B. And both of them are at the same temperature, 25 degrees. So they say, which body will transfer heat? Yes. Who can answer me this? If both are at the same temperature. Neither of them. Neither of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody agrees with that? So, no. yeah. is the surface area B larger than A? No, no, they're same. They're same. There's no other body. There's just two of them at the same temperature. And Would there's no heat transfer. Okay. Basically, the real answer is that A will transfer heat to B and B will transfer equal amount of heat to A. I'll write this down, okay? A will transfer equal amount of heat to B and vice versa. But there is no net net means that basically there is no resultant okay so there is no remaining thing so there is no net heat flow between them so basically if they transfer like if let's suppose you are going out with a friend okay and you have five chocolates and she has five chocolates and then you give her five chocolates and she gives you five chocolates do you lose anything no right so your net loss is nothing but you can still transfer so the transfer is going on but if we look at as a whole so there's no net transfer do you guys understand this yes good so this is the point i wanted to make okay now so this is basically the main main points that I wanted to uh, talk about uh, radiation and radiation basically uh, depends on this and heat transfer depends on this and now I'm going to talk about some of the real world you know examples that we see every day and we need to you know 
uh, learn about it okay so so first of all we are going to talk about some real world examples and i'm going to ask you people and i'm sure you guys are so smart you guys will you guys will basically answer me correctly so first example is we're going to talk about heating heating of a kitchen pan okay so suppose that we have a pan and we want to you know boil some water inside the pan there is a a heater it could be electric or gas it doesn't really matter it's there so i would like you to know i would like you to tell me that exactly how does the heat reach the water in terms of conduction then we're going to talk about convection and then we're going to talk about radiation okay so let me just um, yeah so i'm just saying that this uh, pan is a black colored pan okay all right so first of all black colored metal pan sorry so first of all let's talk about conduction how does heat reach water in this example please tell me convection current for conduction convection current sir metal is a good conductor of heat so the pan is first heated and then be transferred to the water okay yes so we can write that metal is a good conductor right we all agree to this so yes pan gets heated quickly and transfers heat to water okay then what about convection how does that happen in this who can tell me this Yes, a pan is here. Pan. Sir, uh, mm. the heat rises from the bottom to top and cool comes from the top to bottom. Okay, yes, that's correct. So basically, the heated water is going to rise, and the cold is going to sink. That would create a convection current. So we're going to write that too. Heated water becomes less dense and rises. cold water sinks as it is more dense this causes convectional current okay
okay everyone now can you tell me what happens how does radiation play a role in this uh, sir uh, since it's black color then it's a good absorber it mm. can absorb more heat okay that's correct so we're going to write black color would absorb more infrared when right infrared radiations hence it will transfer more heat that's correct everybody understand this if you have any questions please let me know okay so can you please define infrared 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 is basically uh, a type of radiation that uh, is also a wave okay we going to more we going to learn about it more in waves but right now it's sort of a wave that can transfer heat all right and it does not require any medium to go it can actually go through vacuum as well so right now you can just you know understand that and as we progress you'll understand is it clear okay now let's talk about another example so i want to talk about a fire burning wood or coal okay now so we have probably every word but in here would have at some point in their life might have enjoyed some barbecue or maybe you know sit around a fireplace so let's suppose there's like people sitting here near the fireplace so i would like to you to tell me which type of energy transfer would cause the people sitting close to fire get warmed yes you need to answer me whether it's conduction convection or radiation okay, so let me write it here as well so you can answer i think it's true okay it's what sorry radiation radiation why why not the other two why can't it be the other two why do you guys think that Conduct it's not conduction because it's not direct in contact. It's not conduction because it's like not it's direct not in contact. It's not touching. It's not touching. Okay, so basically, uh, it's not conduction because one, air is a poor conductor, right? Because it's a gas, right? Not directly in contact. Okay, that's correct. What about convection then why can't it be convection convection can happen in air the hot air rises so okay. and they're not on top of the fire 
exactly so hot air rises at the top of fire that doesn't reach the people right and what about conduction radiation sorry So radiation would be because the heat will transfer directly to colder region directly to colder region in the surroundings and why does it do that because it does not require a medium to do so yeah exactly so it does not require a medium so it does not really depend on whether it's a good conductor or a bad conductor or whatever it just goes right away right everybody understands this yes all right so the last thing we're going to do before we end this chapter is So we want to basically design a thermos okay so in a thermos okay i need to make a thermos now wait sir please pull up the bed and do write sorry you want to write okay yeah sorry i'll just uh, try to draw it like this right you guys have written uh, everything on the top sir so, uh, can you show the uh, how does heat reach water radiation man how does uh, oh okay all right sir now let's look at this one okay now we have designed a thermos so it can keep everything cool and hot and whatever i put a cork a cork is basically a sort of a lid which uh, could be wood or plastic and then we have vacuum we have 
shiny silver outside wall and shiny silver inside wall and vacuum in between of that wall fine so my question is how does it prevent conduction happening yes anybody can tell me because there is a vacuum okay and what does vacuum do sir conduction requires medium to travel through okay yes that is correct so conduction requires a medium and cannot happen in vacuum so that would cause the heat not go outside or come in from the outside right so the walls would stop now how would the convection stop any idea can convection happen in vacuum what do you guys say no okay so one of those is that convection cannot happen in vacuum it also needs this there is another point in this does it so because of yeah. the cork hmm cork what yes, there is no temperature change okay so cork would not let hot air or cool air you know go in and out so would not let convection current to form all right cork will stop convection current of air happening do you guys understand okay can you also explain what is the use of cork in conduction is it also helping us to stop conduction yes caroline caroline can you tell me please how how does it stop conduction from happening caroline can you hear me afan and um phase is hand gone okay Farzine, can you tell me why cork is important for not doing conduction? Anybody has an idea? Oh no, that's not good. Because wood and plastic are. poor conductors they're insulators right so you need to write that as well okay how can radiation be stopped then because radiation can happen in vacuum as well so is there a way it's stopping radiation or reducing it anyone Uh, sir, uh, since it's shiny, is it a good reflector? Yes. So shiny, and silver is a light color. Shiny silver is a good reflector. Okay. My next question is, and this this is last one. Why have we painted both the walls inside and outside shiny silver? 
can't we just paint inside as black or maybe outside as black just to look cool So won't it absorb more heat? So it's yeah. black. Yes. So we don't want heat from inside to go outside or from outside to inside. So we want to paint both of them shiny silver. Is it clear, everybody? If you have any questions, please let me know. All right. So I hope you guys understand the whole thing. And now, uh, in tomorrow's class, we are going to do um, worksheet related to this. So see you tomorrow then. Bye. Have a nice day.